Hello YouTube, my name's Dave. Welcome to my workshop in a single car garage here in South Australia. Come on in and let's see what we can make. Hello and welcome back. Firstly I'd just like to say thank you for the kind comments of encouragement that uh, some of you sent me from my uh, last video. Very much appreciated and in fact that's what spurred me on to, uh, to doing this one. Now in today, some of you may have already seen um, a 30 second clip of this grinder um, running with power feed and automatic cross feed um, just running the uh, across the top of the chuck today's video is going to be about uh, why I went down that route and uh, how I did it and some demonstrations of, uh, of it in action my first thoughts with this project was just to actually just to power the table to go back and forwards otherwise I thought you know with a manual grind you know the constant to and fro you know especially gr especially grinding the chuck um, you know if I didn't watch out I'd, uh, I'd end up with arms like Popeye so I turned my attention to YouTube and, and did a search and there was there were several uh, people out there that had already uh, done what I have done to this one um, but not but on, not on not on a Grimby they were they were USA people I think uh, and that consisted of a uh, a motor and gearbox attached to the table with a uh, an adjustable arm back to a fixed point on the saddle that controlled the amount of to and fro of the of the table now their version uh, they used a uh, adjustable sliding block as the pivot point on the on the arm um, therefore making it infinitely variable but I consider that, that was you know unnecessary really I mean you haven't got a it's not as though you're in you're in uh, uh, industry you know and, and every second counts you know that you must have the exact length of the of the uh, of the table just just for the part you know so it, it doesn't matter a bit in a home workshop you know whether okay you know you're grinding a six inch part and and okay the table moving is seven or eight it's just that you know you're just wasting a little bit of time so I didn't bother with that I, I, you'll, you'll see in a minute what I've actually did with my arm now what you can hopefully see in this shot is a here that is a windscreen wiper motor front windscreen wiper motor from a Ford car uh, with a arm attached to it this arm has several holes drilled and tapped to take the arm which is at the moment is just just laying here and is and is attached to the saddle although the motor is rated uh, for continuous use I have added here a standard electronic aluminium heat sink that was flat and I have annealed it and wrapped it round uh, as, as, as a tight uh, spring fit uh, to the motor casing to, to cool some of the heat off now this motor being 12 volt from a vehicle um, there is a 12 volt power supply in the control cabinet round the back I shall show you that a little bit later this here are we making that out yes this grey box um, has inside it a speed control unit uh, cheapy Chinese bought from eBay that allows me to vary the speed that the this arm will actually rotate round I'll now um, just connect the arm up and uh, so you can see what that looks like now before you uh, safety Nazis start reaching for your keyboard and, and, and warn me about that this is going to be rotate, rotating round and, and could be dangerous uh, I'm in the process of uh, trying to find a guard for it um, it needs to be easy to fit and lightweight because it'll have to actually be mounted on the table so at the moment I'm looking for a plastic container that I can cut the bottom out or a, or a, a, a round washing up bowl anyway let's uh, turn the thing on now I've set this uh, on the four inch mark so in theory that should that the, the uh, magnetic shut should now move uh, four inches so I'll turn it on and turn the speed control and as we can see she's going to and fro at four inches 
and of course I can change the speed obviously quite a, an ingenious uh, idea it wasn't mine of course I say I'll see it uh, I see it on YouTube but uh, so this is my interpretation of it as I say it works works quite well very pleased with it so uh, I say and all, all we need to do if you need a longer stroke is, is, is to just stop it and uh, oh dear what's happened here <laughs> Right, it's right. The uh, the uh, saddle feed was uh, cranking away to itself quite merrily. Uh, so I say we just need to undo this. Say so I really, really must make a, a one piece uh, spacer for this instead of the, <laughs> all this pile of washers. But uh, yeah, get another little uh, another little job to do. Would you say okay? Right, let's. I'll move it out to there. That's now going to give us a ten inch stroke. So it's just as simple as that just to swap it over like that and switch it back on and away we go and we now have a 10 inch stroke so uh, very useful that that certainly saves the saves the arms you know this constant cranking back and forwards right so there we are right on a final note, the stroke of this arm must be shorter than the total movement of the table, otherwise serious damage c can incur either by either to the table because it hit the end stops or it will strip the gearbox motor out. Once you've determined the uh, stroke, uh, that that then determines what length this arm is between here and the pivot point that goes onto the onto the saddle. Once you've made that up, it's just a case of determining on where this part goes by by moving it backwards and forwards and, and finding the optimum position when when this is either vertical, totally vertical, um, that the grinding table, uh, that the chuck is under the centre line of the wheel. Um, other than that, um, nothing much I can say about it really. We will now move on to the stepper control. What you're now seeing is the setup for how I automated the saddle control. It consists of a, a, a NEMA stepper motor here with the accompanying uh, driver and power supplies in the control box at the back which I'll again I'll show you much later there is a uh, timing tooth pulley on the motor and onto the uh, hand wheel and is driven by this this uh, timing belt when I was considering uh, fitting the stepper drive uh, to the uh, to this grinder I did some uh, research on the World Wide Web since I I've never dealt with stepper motors before and there seems to be two camps out there the first group say that you should never fast wind a handle uh, that, is, that is connected to a to the stepper motor when it's not powered up because the back MF generator of this motor turning could actually cause damage to the uh, driver board now the other, the other groups says no, that that that's total rubbish. There are protection diodes built into the system um, to stop that. So of course I was still <laughs> no wiser after any of that. So what I decided to do was I had to have some means of tensioning the 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 timing belt. So what I did was instead of actually making it so that it actually locked up with a spanner, it now has a sliding mechanism and I'll just by turning this knob here there uh, I can as you see the belt is slackening and I'll be able to slip that off and wind the handle quite freely to my heart's content without any fear of, of, of damaging the uh, uh, driver board now with a, a, a 
stepper motor, it isn't just a case of, of connecting it up to a power supply and away you go. You've got you've got to have a driver board to go through it. That needs an additional five volts supply to control the the stop start board and reverse motion and also it will not work without a um, signal generator which is this little box here with the knob on uh, it will work with either sine or, or square wave or saw two phase so what actually happens is when it's actually working by me turning that knob I can control how much this wheel goes around either in, in speed or, or the number of steps now in order for this to uh, work as a, a grinder is, is supposed to we, we need some means of controlling the uh, when this hand wheel advances so to, in order to do that I fitted here what is known as a Hall effect switch and it's an, a, a, a semiconductor device that switches when you get a magnet near it so as I actually a, a magnet appears the little light comes on and as we can see the hand wheel is turning round and as it goes past again it stops so that's how this is intended to work so what we've actually got to do is is to um, set it up so that uh, you, that um, it can it can it can advance as as each as each time the see if each time the chuck goes backwards and forwards the motor stops and starts um, with a conventional grinder, you know something like a, a Jones and Shipman 540, you, you have no choice. That the, the feed happens at either end of the stroke, but of course, this being electronic, we can actually do it at only one end of the stroke if need be. So, whereas we have, let me just say, move move those in closer. So there's there's some. Imagine that's 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 your uh, stroke that you've got there. So each each time the the uh, magnet approaches so, so the table's going along so it's, it's feed stop feed stop feed stop etc as, as, as it goes backwards and forwards but of course being electronic if I actually take that magnet out of the way and still do the same stroke it only works it only works in one direction um, so in effect you can like be cut spring cut cut spring cut so that's that's the way that uh, I've set that up now here we see I've set it back up on on automatic stroke again and I've set the magnets and as you can see at the end of each stroke it is advancing the saddle towards me in, in this instance but I can flick the switch I make it go in the other direction if I want to as easy as that and I can I can change the I can change the amount of feed just by twiddling the knob on the speed control now this hand wheel is is the same as the downslide it is it's half inch unified 20 which means 50 tower turn so really you know this this needs to go anywhere between a, a fifth and a third of a turn at a time to uh, per cut otherwise it'll take forever to, uh, to get anywhere now it's quite important to get the position of these magnets correct uh, as you see here the, the, the left hand magnet is incorrectly placed it is it is uh, uh, it's giving a double feed it's feeding now goes past and feeds again when it comes back so uh, you just have to keep juggling them backwards and forwards to uh, so you just get just the right amount uh, each time otherwise you're as I say like in this instance it's giving a, a double cut at one end of the stroke So this is a this is a rack and pinion drive so you can see it's, it's instantaneous uh, reversal of the hand wheel it's only a plain hand wheel and I've removed the crank so there's no uh, no safety issues of uh, of touching this you know, touching this wheel and uh, you know get yourself knocked by it
Now built into the system is, is a jog button in the side if I actually want to manually move it and, I can, and it also has a uh, limit switch feature in it and say at the moment you see the, the, the light is on here showing that the, there is there is power available to the drive so if I continue jogging it towards me what will happen in a minute is, is it will hit the limit switch and the motor will stop so to overcome that is I now need to throw the switch in the opposite direction so that it moves away there to push the jog and hold this override button down the motor as you see is is, is running again now, now the light is on I couldn't let go of the override button and it, the same works at, at the other end as well well I think that's as much as I can show you on this little bit now I think I'll have a uh, reposition the camera and actually show you some of the, uh, the, the, the the wiring and the control panel at the back uh, stand by for that now I do apologize now I've switched over to handheld because it, it work a bit of tripod it, on this is is not particularly uh, very easy so I don't know where we can actually make out underneath here all the uh, the wiring uh, goes through PVC tubing and it comes to there and then it comes out of here into flexible conduit I say because cable is almost much better to, to to move backwards and forwards as a as a big loop than it than it is you know being captive and, and, and bent that then goes down through the who's there goes down through the cabinet the other this uh, cable that you see there that is this is this is coming from the uh, from the limit switch uh, it then goes through the cabinet and we're going down here now and this is the control box that I kept on uh, talking to you about um, I'll, I'll pan back from it so you can actually see it's just it's just a white PVC box on the back it contains three power supplies 12 volt for the table feed uh, for the power feed uh, 24 volts for the stepper drive and 5 volts for the uh, control uh, for the stepper board it's got uh, two fans in it there's a there's a sucking fan down here underneath so sucking the air in it goes across the cabinet and this is a blowing out fan out the top I've put four lights on the side we can make that out yes top one shown mains 24 volts 12 volts 5 volts so if any of those lights go out, um, I know that there's uh, that we've got a fuse that's gone. So there we have it. And that brings us to the end of another uh, video. I hope you can understand <laughs> my ramblings and the ums and the ahs and things. But as I say, it is, it is, I find it's very difficult to uh, stand in here like talking to myself. Um, now as I say, when I started this uh, grinder, I had no in I had no thoughts of, of, of having a YouTube channel so unfortunately there is no uh, video of all this uh, gubbins that you've just seen but there's certainly there's plenty of still shots that I've uh, that I took from my own records and for emailing to friends and things so as I say stay tuned there's there's there's, there's a lot of uh, lot of still photographs showing you know the mechanical bits as, as, as well as the wiring uh, that just leaves me to say thanks once yet again for watching uh, please feel free to uh, leave comments good or bad uh, below or send me an email to the uh, to the uh, address in the uh, description below uh, just say well take care stay safe and well wherever you are in the world and uh, hopefully see you on yet another video bye for now bye